Olá pessoal, boa noite. Estamos aqui ao vivo no YouTube. Essa é a escola The Rising Sun, uma escola de inglês em Goiânia, uma escola de inglês que tem uma preocupação com o ensino de literatura, de filosofia, de história, de artes. É uma escola de inglês que tem uma vocação acadêmica e é uma escola desenvolvida com base em pesquisa. E esse semestre nós, e nós estudamos um autor chamado Mirkoto, um autor moçambicano, e hoje os alunos, alguns alunos dos cursos intermediários e avançados prepararam algumas revisões críticas para serem apresentadas. É, essas revisões tratam dos contos, né? Ah, os livros que nós lemos em português são Histórias Abesonhadas e lemos também o Vozes Anoitecidas. Desses dois livros, né, em inglês, é uma coletânea chamada She Loves Me, e nós lemos a tradução, e esse livro e desses contos nós escolhemos alguns que vão ser discutidos hoje. É, eu já vou começar o seminário, porque são algumas pessoas né, que vão falar, então nós temos muito o que ouvir. As apresentações serão em inglês, alguns alunos apresentarão direto daqui do Zoom e outros estão gravados, porque são alunos que estão no Reino Unido e, e, e na Alemanha, e por conta do fuso horário não poderiam participar é, presencialmente, mas deixaram os trabalhos gravados. O primeiro trabalho que vai ser apresentado hoje é o trabalho da Helena, uma menina de 11 anos, que estudou o conto Ascolino. E é justamente pela Helena que nós vamos começar o nosso seminário. É, just a moment. Só um minuto. E aqui está a Helena. Um, hello, my name is Helen. Agora sim. Everybody will never stay and they don't seem to like each other. 
Thank you, Helen. It's very beautiful, don't you think? Yes, she's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. I will just put us uh, visible. So uh, we started with 
Helena talking about Ascolino, and this will be, e assim vai ser durante a apresentação. Então, nós vamos em blocos de contos. Então, o próximo a apresentar, agora não um vídeo, um, a leitura é o Plínio, meu irmão, uh, e começamos por ele. So, Plínio, get ready, it's your turn now, man. Hello, good night. I will talk about the short story How Ascolino do Perpetuo Socorro Lost His Spouse. Uh, I will talk about Ascolino and the colonization parallel. In the short story, in the short story How Ascolino do Perpetuo Socorro Lost His Spouse, the author presents a strong parallel between the Goan figure Ascolino, and the colonial power. It's very interesting how the main character is depicted as a decadent figure, ambiguous, ambiguous weak, drunk, that fails even to hurt himself. The names of the main character, Ascolino, implies the Portuguese word Asco that means a bad feeling of something that you repose or dislike. And as his name suggests, Ascolin is involved in many situations that evocate this kind of feeling. For example, in his relationship with his wife or the way he deals with his servant and the way he puts himself as a superior count because he's in the Portuguese ascendance. For Epiphania, that implies some holy manifestation. We see in the beginning of the story, a mysterious silent figure becoming an activist of her own future, assuming the position of leader in the big change in Ascolino's life. An, a manifestation of a divine figure that changes all the status quo of Ascolino's life, suggesting that a big change in the colonial power is happening. Ascolino represents the decadence, a figure that once showed power as the colonizer, now is represented only in the per, in pejorative means. He is disaccredited by his servant, abandoned by his wife, and humiliated in his sacred place, the liquid store. For the colonial power were the same, was the same. It once evocated the ascendance for everything, land, people, wealth. Now the power was abruptly, abruptly ended. It's very good, man. It's very, very good. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think it's a good reflection on Ascolin. The next one is, a, is another video. It's from Gabriela. Gabriela, is in Germany and she is also talking about Ascolin. Let's take a look at what she has to tell us. Hello everybody, my name is Gabriela Lelis. Uh, I am in Berlin, uh, Germany right now, so that's why I cannot attend to the meeting today. Uh, but yeah, I'm a student of the, the Rising Sun and I'm in the last um, year of my English studies, uh, reaching the C1 level, I guess. Uh, so I'm really happy for this and I'm going to <laughs> read uh, the, my, my, my text about one of the Mia Koto's short stories that is going to be the day Mamata Bata exploded. So let's go. Well, uh, yeah, this text, my name is Gabriela Lelis, and this text is going to be about one of Mia Koto's short stories called, called The Day Mam Mamata Bata Exploded. This is a narrative about an ox known as Mamata Bata and a co uh, cow-haired uh, boy called uh, Azadias. He used to work in a farm, lived with his uncle and grandmother, and he used to be exploited by the family to work on the land, especially to take care of animals. 
One day, Mama Tabata stepped in a land mine and exploded. And Azarias uh, was sent to the woods to look for the ox that was already dead. <clears throat> so uh, he decided to flee from the life he had in the farm, being exploit exploited by, by his family and kept away from his childhood, innocence and dreams. Since Azarias had no place to go, he stayed hidden in the woods until his uncle and grandmother noticed his absence and looked after him. When people had found Azarias, they convinced him to come back to the farm uh, with his uncle's promises, promise that uh, he could go to school from that day on. In, uh, in the way back home, Azarias stepped in a landmine and exploded, just like Mama Tabata. Mia Cole's short story, short story is a very sensitive and beautiful one. It refers to Mozambican history, the Civil War time, when the country was surrounded by landmines. Until today, uh, local people face problems with them, since many areas are still covered by unknown, um, unknown landmines from this period. Uh, the landmines are representative from, uh, of last generation's mistakes uh, who, le who lead, led the country to many wars and to explode themselves uh, and the future of uh, the newer ones. Azarias was talented uh, with animals, a good cowherd, and useful for his family. He had dreams like any other kid and wanted to study, to study like many other children. Azarias' uncle, uh, Hau, used to exploit him uh, due to his enslaved uh, background which reminds the reader of the ongoing consequences of the exploitation of black African people in the past. The boy didn't have much contact with people from his age, but he had imag imagination and expectations about how it would be to be a child with a child, a childhood. It is a very touchy story for port portraying the dreams and fears of a black child who just wanted to go to school and ended up uh, dying like an animal, such as many enslaved uh, black people and Mozambican who died during, died during wars inside their own country. The day Mama Tabata exploded is a very beautiful uh, uh, way to approach delicate and sad issues. A good one for those interested in Mozambicanian's history and society from a literature, literature perspective point of view that brings out the magical side of Mozambicanian culture. Um, also, it is an engaging text for people who enjoy so social relevant topics such as family abuse, childhood and wars. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Gabes. Yes, Mabata Bata is a story that is... Mabata Bata é uma história que é muito importante é, para mim. Né? Então, eu tenho uma relação muito profunda com essa história. E a, a gente continua falando sobre Mabata Bata, mas agora com o Philip. Philip Guedes, continuando sobre o Mabata Bata. Já foi o da Gabriela. Philip! It's your turn, man. Hello, my name is Philip, and I'm going to present the day of Mabata Bata exploded. The day of the day Mabata Bata exploded used the folklore history of Inati to expose the reality from the people who lives in a civil war territory. The metaphor from the story give us reports of violence in an orphan hard life. In his fantastic portrait about reality, Mia Couto illustrated a generation of children who dreams about school education, but they are forced by hard labor. The tale exposes a society who traits its ch children like a slave animals, without 
without any possibility or right to get free by education. Azarias, with his child's imagination, bring to reality the god bird in Lati to explain the uncomprehensive and fatal consequences of war. It is still his childhood. Inglati is a powerful mythological creature repre represented by a giant bird with power arising from the thunder. Its image is related to natural phenomena caused by lightning and the thunderstorm. Tando Novati portrayed Inglati as a bird uh, as four colors, green, red, black, and white, each lives in the mountains, preferable at the confluences of rivers. The medicine man of former times knew its hiding place and have even found the eggs of the birds flies to heaven into the clouds. There may be scores of them, but on only will be dangerous and causes death. The power of Inglati is represented by Mia Couto in the oppression and the coward caused by the war. The main character, Azarias, personify all the orphans that suffer the future consequences of their times. Raul, his uncle, repre represented the retrograde ways of thinking. His vision exposed the slave culture from the Africa. How interfere, interfere with the freedom of Isaiah's choice just by seeing him like a handman slave. His grandmother represented the kindness of Africa. And the hope of the new generation that needs to overcome the slavery culture and civil war. Mia Couto used the poetic ways of writing and the beautiful metaphors to show us the brutality of reality and Africa folklore. Man, that's very good. Congratulations, Philip. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's a good reflection on my Bata Bata. E eu fico muito feliz de compartilhar essa história com vocês, no final das contas. No final das contas, esse curso começou com o objetivo de compartilhar a história do Mabata Bata. E depois, claro, nós fomos indo para outros, outros contos. E agora nós passamos para um outro conto, que é a história dos retornados, que é uma história muito interessante de pessoas que são confundidas com fantasmas. Então, é... O, a contística do Mia Couto vai sempre lidar com esses dois planos, né? um plano do real e um plano do fantástico, do imaginário, do, do folclórico, né? como bem colocou o Felipe. É isso, e o próximo a apresentar, começando os, a, a nossa... Não, ainda tem mais um, né, Enzo? Sobre uma bata-bata, antes de nós passarmos para reto, os retornados. Então, antes da gente passar para os retornados, ainda tem... A apresentação do Enzo. Está pronto, Enzo? Mais ou menos, né? Mas... We're never ready. Vai lá, Enzo. Boa sorte. Enzo Tavares. Uh, the day my bata bata exploded. Minha Couto Steyo, the day my bata bata exploded, it is a really interesting story because it mixes the Mozambican reality and culture. It starts with the death of Mabata Bata, the main ox of a cattle. The cow herd and nephew of the owner, Azarias, thought Aindlati, a mythological thunderbird of African cultures, that killed it. But it was actually a landmine that provoked the death of the animal. Without knowing this, Azarias ran away from his home fearing a punishment of, from his uncle. His uncle and his grandmother were forced to look for him, and not because they loved and cared for him, but because he was someone to look after the cattle for them. So it was pure and simple interest. 
In the end, after finding Azarias and promising him to go to school, he steps on the landing mine, confusing it with a lightning bird and being engulfed by this, the explosion. Even being a short, simple plot, its interpretation shows the complex context the story ranges. Miyakoto reverences the traditional African cultures with the figure of the Inlati or Thunderbird, and there are, in some cultures, many myths about this bird. For example, if a lightning strikes a village and the medicine men can't remove the taboo left by the bird, the bird, the whole village needs to move from the place to respect it. Beyond this cultural aspect, the landmines that exploded Mabata Bata are a real problem today in African countries. According to the United Nations, since 1999, 130,000 people were victims of landing mines in the world. Mozambique specifically, after a five-year project of removing landmines and 170,000 dispositives disarmed, is no more a danger place to stand. Finally, Mia Koto makes a severe critic for the Mozambican adults and other about the future of the country. In the tale, the uncle and grandmother of Azarias promised to let, to let him go to the school if he didn't run away from home, but actually they were lying to keep him working for them. This scene represents a real betrayal of the older people that has the economical and political power of Mozambique over the Mozambican youth that wants to study and modernize the country. Miyakoto's constructions are renowned internationally. He won, for example, the Camões Prize in 2013. And I really think that Teo, the Dema Bata Bata, exploded, and the whole book, See Loves Me, represents his genius writing. The way he explored magical realism with the Indlati myth and the landmine Rio, and the analysis of the reality of Mozambique, the youth represented by Azarias, betrayed by their own predecessor, the uncle and the grandmother, are proofs of Miyakoto expertise in writing. Congratulations, man. It's a beautiful text. I think, eu acho que você abordou bem a questão da representação de cada um, né? Do... O Felipe fez isso também, né? Da de como os personagens representam dimensões da sociedade, né? É, Bem eu legal. Eu gostei muito do dado da Mina. É interessante também. Tipo Exatamente. Assim, né? Política um de histórico. Estado para desarmar. Muito bom. Agora sim, de fato, começando é, um conto novo, nós vamos para os retornados. The Return, The Two Who Return from the Dead, que é uma história bem esquisita de pessoas que, de repente, morrem numa inundação, supostamente morrem, e depois eles voltam e são confundidos com fantasmas. O pessoal da cidade acha que eles são fantasmas, mas estão dizendo que eles estão vivos. Então, essa história é muito interessante, porque é a primeira vez que um fantasma quer falar que está vivo, entendeu? E, na verdade, é uma pessoa que não é um fantasma. A gente nunca sabe claramente se, de fato, são fantasmas ou se são pessoas. Então é isso, a gente começa com o Rubens e depois é a Bia. Vai lá, Rubens. Hello, good evening. My name is Rubens. And I will. É só a própria I... pessoa que é você, o Rubens, que vai falar. Oh, agora. ok. Uh, good evening, my name is Rubens. And I will talk about the, the tale of the two who returned from the dead. Isso. The tale of the two who returned from the dead is a short story that tells the path of two villagers, Luis Fernando and Anivel Mocavel, who were declared dead after a water flood that destroyed their village and then they were thought to have drowned. it. After they survived the choppy water and fight to come back to the village, 
the men start to being treated like a lost sweet or even less as ghosts. During the tale, it can be seen that they suffer by military, military rulers that divert supplies and that made them not momentarily acquire the citizenship at their home village justified by a possible lack of access to food, clothing, and other basic necessities. First, it's important to emphasize that when the author of the book, Mia Kultu, uses in the title the word dead, it have in many possibility, possibilities of meaning, the association with the exclusion suffered by the men made by the system. As we can see in the example, you are no longer on our list. Where are you going to live? That is in the book. Analogous, analogously, the, the process of turning men into ghosts represent the negligence that people suffer in Africa for a long time. It can be perceived, therefore, that even in the end of the tale, when Louise and Anibo receive, receive it back the title or demand members of villages, the rulers continue to treat the men as apparitions and condition, conditioning them not to leave their village or life or any else, else again, because they accept them, them back as a clemency, but that nevertheless is the obligation of all serious human civilization. Hum. Muito bem, Rubens. A percepção que você teve de, de que os fantasmas são também uma crítica a todo o processo colonial, né? transformar pessoas em fantasma. E já na, na passagem para durante a guerra ali, né, é, e a todo o sistema burocrático que foi desenvolvido em Moçambique e como isso também é, gerou problemas, eu acho que o conto fala da do processo do fim da do colonialismo e do começo da república, né, ainda bastante militarizado e tal. Tudo bem. A próxima a falar sobre os retornados é a Bia. Yes, Bia? Está pronta? Pode ir? Yes. Então você pode começar. Uh -huh. Ok. Hello? Você yeah. pode se apresentar, uh, porque é para as pessoas saberem que é você que está lendo. Uh, meu nome é Beatriz. Tenho 19 anos e eu, eu vou falar sobre os retornados. Um, the Tale of the Two Who Return from the Dead. The short story, The Two Who Return from the Dead, by the Mozambican writer Mia Couto, portrays three subjects at the same time in a single story uh, ghosts, floods, and bureaucracy. It all starts with a village that was changed by a flood, and consequently, two men disappeared, but they were considered dead because their bodies and documents couldn't be found. However, days after the event, Luis Fernando and Anibal Mucavel were already considered dead, that they were already considered dead, appear to the population that believes they're both, that both are ghosts. The, unlike many stories that refer to ghosts as being to do not exist and someone must prove the existence, we have the case of two men who claim to be not ghosts and prove that existence. In addition, they need to prove their survival from the flood, or otherwise they would not have the state support, which was different to their story and to the general population discourse. The survivors and the, and the general are a reference for, for the people who lost everything with the flood. Oh, sorry, 
The survivors and the general are referring to the bureaucracy that a regime that, that has the purpose of separating the government from the population in order to always put the majorities in quills. Without documents, Louis and Annibal had no way of proving that social name, much less receive proper help even when they were in life or death situation, have no one else to ask for aid. And another point that shows social dis disregard for the people who lost everything with the flood is the fact that, that the general is gaining weight, which means that he was in a very good situation in context where majority of the people suffered from hunger and poverty. The just severe people who are on earth to suffer along with other people in a place where the independence hadn't yet been born. Muito bem, Bia. A parte que você percebeu que o general estava engordando por conta que ele estava desviando os alimentos foi bem legal. E é isso, né? Nessa história é, fica claro que a burocracia consegue até transformar pessoas vivas em pessoas mortas ou vice-versa. Como no conto não fica claro se eles de fato estão vivos ou se eles estão mortos. É um conto muito interessante, eu recomendo muito a leitura dos retornados. É, bem, o próximo conto que nós vamos ler, quer dizer que o vai ser lido a análise, é um conto muito legal chamado A Mulher de Mim, em inglês é Woman of Me. É, esse conto será analisado pelo Santiago, e aí eu já pergunto, Santiago, você está pronto? Are you ready, man? I'm always ready, my friend. Ah, muito bem, então você já pode se apresentar e se preparar. Hi, my name is Santiago. I have 14 years. I'm 14 years old. And I'm going to present the text Woman of Me by Mia Couto and analyze it with the mythical, like the Greek character Tiresias. Tiresias and the Woman of Me. Woman of Me is another Mia Couto short story that tells the story of two figures inhabiting only one body. The narrative is particularly surreal due to the ambiguity of the story. The boundary between opposites, between existence and non-existence. The main dichotomy that permeates the text initially seems to be reinforced, just to be later deconstructed. Miyakoto, the author, appealed again to defend gender stereotypes before cleverly mixing opposites in strategy, in strategy completely violates established certainty. In order for, for the analysis of the tale to be carried out in a more in-depth and leg legitimate way, it is necessary that we observe the character Tiresias. Tiresias was a person who managed to inhabit the body of a man and a woman in the same incarnation, and after being cursed by Hera with blindness, is gifted by Zeus with wisdom and clairvoyance. That is why he is seen as a wise man who has lived both sides of the coin. In the main character in the tale Woman of Me, as well as Tiresias, only becomes complete when he joins his other side. In the tale, it is said that the character is like ice and that both of us were transient, converting ourselves into the previous substance out of which we had been formed. This sentence is further explained when the protagonist says that when close to the girl, feels as if he were inside her mother's womb. And when far away, he feels far from home, and that he never, for both the girl and the boy, and the protagonist, I'm sorry, 
they needed each other to be complete and that they need to be each other. And that is why the tale is called Woman of Me. Another point to be anal analyzed is how the protagonist compares existence and non-existence to those who have not yet been born. Because from the moment you die, your soul goes to another place. And when, you're, and when you are existence, existing, your soul is present in the world and exercing some function. But before it existes, existed, at the moment when it was still being formed, everything and nothing coexisted in the same place. And because Tiresias inhabited the body of two people, we can interpret that he, like the yet to be born, have their souls as a mystery. Tiresias and the two characters in the tale are related by their division of bodies as both were able to inhabit two bodies at the same time and in the same way, transit between the corporeal states of nature. Tiresias, after becoming blind, leaves material goods and the limitations of the body aside to acquire wisdom, just as the characters leave their solitary consciousness to become just one being. The difference between Tiresias and the two is that we When transiting between the two realities, Tiresias gains wisdom and manages to understand both sides, since the lovers only, you, only understood that without their other part, they would be incomplete. To conclude the analysis, it is important to understand that both texts has a lot about souls and their existence, and that for us to become complete, it is necessary that We accept who we are and who we will be. Very profound. É um texto bem profundo esse seu texto, Santiago. Thank é, you. Acho que você foi muito feliz em fazer a análise do Woman of Me junto com o Tiresias, né? Eu acho que tem... Woman of Me é a história de um homem que meio que se funde a uma mulher. Então, são... É, claro que o Tiresias viveu como homem e depois viveu como mulher. Ele não viveu como os dois. Mas, de qualquer maneira, acho que é um ponto de confluência. E ficou bem legal a, a sua interpretação. Thank you very much. Agora, pessoal, nós chegamos num ponto que, na verdade, foi uma, uma surpresa muito positiva, que foi a leitura do Blind Estrelinho. O Segue Estrelinho é, na, na minha opinião, uma das histórias mais criativas do Mia Couto. E ela, a história trata da capacidade que uma pessoa tem de contar uma história e fazer com que a pessoa que ouça essa história veja aquele acontecimento. Então, o, o Segue Estrelinho é uma história de um contador de histórias e, principalmente, de uma pessoa que é cega e percebe o mundo pela narrativa desse amigo que é o Gigito. Então, é uma história muito tocante, eu acho que as análises que foram feitas também são muito interessantes. Nós vamos começar com uh, um vídeo da Alice, que tá, é, também está em Portland, é, na Inglaterra, falando sobre o Estrelinho. A Alice vai falar sobre um filósofo chamado Mikhail Bakhtin, e ela utiliza um, um conceito do Bakhtin, que é um, um conceito muito interessante, é o conceito de surplus of vision, né, de excedente de visão, para fazer a análise dela. Então, é, enquanto a análise do Santiago, por exemplo, foi uma análise que foi para um caminho é, de uma perspectiva de interpretação de um mito, a Alice vai partir da interpretação por meio da filosofia. E, é, bem... Vamos ver o que a Alice tem para nos contar. Oh, essa é a querida Alice. Só ter certeza que eu liguei o som. Funcionando. Just a moment. E aqui vamos nós. Essa é a minha querida Alice falando sobre o Segue Estrelinho. 
Hello, I am Alice speaking from Pointu, England. The Bakhtinian concept of circles of vision in dialogues in Miyakoto's Blind Estrelino. The Bakhtinian concept of circles of vision can be found in dialogues between Estrelino, Gigito, and Infelismina in Miyakoto's Blind Estrelino. Through the expansion of perception by the characters in the story, who, as the tale goes, develop the vision of their surroundings in such a way that does not physically happen around them, but only inside their imaginations. This perception is also different for each of them, for each of them has a different point of view from each other, as Bakhtin affirms. Two objects cannot occupy the same space at the same time, therefore no perspectives can be identical. In this story, the characters of Gigito guide Estrelinho, a blind character. He, descri he describes the blind man, the world as if it were the heavens, full of fantasies and fine lacery. Gigito's imagination is, in the plot, so strong, vivid and fantastic that even Estrelinho thought he could see sometimes. At this point in the story, the character has a surplus of vision since he is able to perceive the world in a way that is new to him and is, and is expanded compared to his previous perception. According to Bakhtin, to understand the world and the self, one has to see through other people's eyes as well as their own. This way, the character of the Lee perceives the world and himself through the other's perspective, and from that he is able to interpret his existence. Later in the story, Jujito has to leave Celine to go to war, and his sister, Infidus Mina, replaces him. However, the character of Infidus Mina is not like her brother. He's, she's an, an imaginative, dull, and unromantic. She describes the world to, hit, to the blind man with reason and factuality. His world loses its fantasy and its magic. A few days later, they, perceive, they receive the news that Jujito had died in war. The woman stops talking, upset with her loss, until Estrelin decides to describe to her the role that Jujito has grown inside him. Her world becomes beautiful, wonderful, and fantastic. This way, if it is Mina's perception is expanded to the heavens, since she, in this moment, can see herself unborn and in other lives, seeing the role that has been described by Estrelin through his creativity. Thank you. Muito legal. É... Eu acho muito legal ver uma menina de 14 anos falando sobre Bakhtin com tanta naturalidade. É... E o Bakhtin é um filósofo muito importante, porque ele está na minha tese, então é impossível né, que ele, de certa maneira, também não participasse das minhas aulas. O próximo a apresentar e agora nós vamos na sequência sobre é, o estrelinho, é a Dani Fiuza. Are you ready, Dani? Você está pronta? I hope so. <risos> yes. Ô, pessoal, vamos tirar um print, faz um rosto feliz aí, todo mundo sorrindo, para a gente colocar a internet. Beleza. É, e aí nós vamos com a Dani agora. Blind estrelinho. Go, Dani. Hello, my name is Dani Fiuza, and I will talk about Blind Strelinho. Mia Coates' short story, Blind Strelinho, put us in a position to reflect on, on our ability to look, more than just look, see. The story of a blind man who needs a guide to describe the world to him is not new. But the difference is how these words is described is that it makes the history, the story, reverberate and can even propose change in our uh, way the seeing the world. If we live in a society highly perceived by the sense of science, with Estrelinho and Gigito and later in with Infilismina, we can remember that vision is just part is just part of the complex system 
we have to perceive the word. It is a door that may or may not give us safe access to perceive, assimilate, experience, and finally understand momentarily what we are living. Not ours, not ours, a uh, being without sign does not sing. Estrelinho, guided by the poetic vision of the imaginative Gigito, saw more than the eyes of men, many who have their entire Egyptian vision system and are capable of seeing full. When Estrelinho loses his friend and descriptor of the word, at the moment, and Gigito is upset to provide military service in the current war, the real possibility of blindness for the blind is presented. It is a further accentuated by the arrival of Gigito's sister, who comes to request of her brother to be the new guide for Estrelinho. Unfortunately, she doesn't have the poetic vision of Gigito. She says, sees and describes the world in a wretched, re real, and sometimes if silent way. Whatever it is with the news of Gigito's death in the war, that a new sense of a uh, seeing what is beyond present itself for both Estrelinho and Infelizmin. In the search for the neurologist's name in Portuguese, for the name for Infelizmina itself, which suggests the concept of unhappiness, the blind man begins with the happiness of dreaming for her. Estrelinho begins to be Infelizmina's guide describing the blind way of seeing the world, not by what it present itself, but by the way we choose to see it. Come on, I will show you the way, say Estrelinhos to Infelizmina in the last sentence of this story. Gigito described what was not there. Infelizmina described little of what was there, and Estrelinho, this vision, was thirsty to life to remember what he said to Gigito. I have to live now, other side I forget. To stay the message, to reflect on the way we deal with our potentials how we use them to overcome or to be limited by them. Very good, Dani. É, eu acho que aquele conceito que você usou, né, de perceber além, está muito conectado com a noção de excedente de visão que a, a Liz trouxe. E eu acho que esse conto tem uma, é, uma particularidade né, bastante especial, é, então, acho que você conseguiria falar do conto com uma propriedade ainda mais profunda, né? É, então, eu acho que ficou muito, muito legal. E, e o Estrelinho é um conto que eu gostei muito de ler. Então, ele tem uma... O Estrelinho é... Eu acho que dos contos do Minha Conto que a gente leu e dos contos do Minha Conto que eu já li, eu acho que o Estrelinho estaria certamente no top 3 ali das, dos mais criativos e e como essa mudança de perspectiva, né? uma pe... um narrador para uma pessoa cega, depois um outro narrador para essa mesma pessoa cega, e depois a pessoa cega se tornando narrador de uma pessoa que vê. Né? Então, isso é uma coisa muito bem bolada. Continuando ainda no estrelinho, a gente vai com a Laura. E essa Laura, você pode se apresentar. Hi, I'm Laura. I represent the Flying Estrelinho. Tudo bem, Laurinha. Manda ver. 
Uh, blind Estrelinho is a story about a blind man who never experienced the world by itself due to his condition, but he was very curious about it. Gigito, his friend and guide, described the surroundings and led Estrelinho through a fantastic and logic world created by ima imagination and shadows. One day, Gigito is conscripted to fight in the war and Estrelinho loses his guiding hand. Until the arrival of Infelizmina, Gigito's sisters. Infelizmina guides and describes the world differently from her brother in a cold and direct way, as it is making Estrelinho lose part of his curiosity and passion. Infelizmina and Estrelinho sleep together, and Estrelinho has a, an insight about the world that he never had before. They received a message from the front. Gigito had died. Infelizmina loses her will to live and vitality, but Estrelinho stands as her guide now, showing the blessings and joys of the world. This tale is part of Mia Couto's book, She, she Loves Me, and as being a Mozambican, the author uses a vast lexicon of Mozambican languages, narrative and grammar structure, recreating the Portuguese language. Being influenced by Guimarães Rosa, Jorge Amado, and the Latin American fantastic realism, Couto tells a story about the culture culture and histories of Africa in, in his narratives. Blind Stelinho is a tale about war and how people cope, cope about some harsh realities. Gigi sees the things as they can possibly be and should be without, if, without the war, but he doesn't know peace, fearing the white bird that shows up in his, in his and Stelinho's dreams. Infelizmina sees the words as it, it is now, violent and desperate and ruthless. Estrelinho is the mediator and experiencer building his own understanding about that reality. I'll continue. There are some interpretations about this tale and their characters. And, and one of them is Estrelinho, uh, as an experiencer of a dualist perception. In fact, Gigito lives in an illusionary reality where everything is hope and possibilities until his tragic ending. However, Infelizmina sees a hideous extent of that existence, the cruelty of the war. In the end, neither experiences are from Estrelinho itself, but a reproduction of his guiding hands until the moment where he sleeps with Infelizmina. Gigito is a dreamer and Infelizmina a realistic person. Estrelinho is a creation of both, someone who suffered and suffered from the scourge of war being acknowledged about these gloomy times but fight and hopes for a better future where unseen possibilities can be cited even in the dark state of the present absurd. Wow. It's a very good text. E, e a, essa relação da, da dualidade da percepção do, do estrelinho é também na minha opinião, das coisas mais interessantes, o, o Laura, que ele também vê o mundo pelo olhar do Gigito e depois ele vê o mundo pelo olhar da Infelizmina. E quando ele vai ver o mundo pelo olhar da Infelizmina, é uma, é uma visão muito triste, né? muito decadente. E... Mas, no final das contas, é ele que passa a ser um narrador. Né? Então, dá uma ideia de que ele, depois de ter vivido uma... Um, algum grau de, de, sei lá, de perfeição, de, de muita beleza, ele vai para um plano absolutamente real, né? E isso dói. E aí, 
quando ele, mas viver essas duas dimensões é importante para o estrelinho para que ele atinja algum grau de autonomia quando ele passa a contar a história do jeito que ele vê e aí de novo entra uma uma nova dimensão do conto, né, que é a como o cego vê, é como o estrelinho vê. Então é muito eu recomendo a todos a leitura do cego estrelinho em inglês, blind estrelinho. É, partindo agora para a nossa penúltima apresentação, é, a Maria vai falar sobre um outro conto, que é um conto chamado As Flores de Novidade, ou Novidades Flower, que é uma história, de novo, que o Mia Couto junta essa coisa da realidade dura, da guerra, da miséria, do sofrimento, ao mesmo tempo com uma realidade fantástica, é, sabe, metafísica, relação de sagrado de profano. Então, é isso, Maria. É a sua vez. Hi, my name is Maria. I am 14 years old and I'm going to present a Novidades Flower. Yes. Go, girl. Novidades Flower is a short story from the book Sea Loves Me from Mia Couto. The book begins with the birth of Novidade, a beautiful black girl with parents who are both also black ha that has deep blue eyes. Her parents, Veronica Manga and Jonas Inhamitando, think that she must be some sort of curse, hence the name Novidade Castigo. The father, Jonas Inhamitando, is a miner. He mines the mountain near, near their house leaves early in the morning and comes back late each night. In the story, it becomes clear that the bond that our main character has with her father is something special. According to the narrator, she waits for him at the entrance of the house and brings flowers the same color as her eyes. The flowers are not seen by anyone else and no one knows where she picks them. The mother, Veronica Manga, wishes bluntly for another child in the story, spends almost all of her time in the window, looking at the mine, stagnated, nesting, according to the narrative. The story is set in the middle of a colonial war, which is not clear to the reader until the end of it, when the mountain where her father works explodes taking all of the workers with it. And right after, military explosions can be heard. While running away from the explosions, Novidade and Veronica find a truck with others who are running away. They get on the truck, but, but as they pass in front of the excavation site where Janassi was last found, the girl jumps out of the truck and starts picking up the flowers at a very slow pace as her mother and the others disappear in the road, she plucks the flowers and joins them in the dirt. As her body turns one of the land, she is herself a flower. The concept of sacred is in many cultures on the land and in African ones, it is the home of the ancestors. Where we come from, and where we go back to once we die. In Novidade's Flower, Novidade is a little girl who picks flowers for her father, who happens to be a miner, one that uses the sacred motherland for profit, stealing its rich minerals so he can earn money to provide for his family. Even if he would not survive without robbing the earth, he is still committing a huge act of profanity, disrespecting the earth. His profession is profane on its very roots, and he dies by being swallowed by the tunnels he helped to dig. The girl is the contrast. She is pure, beautiful, delicate, different. She is sacred and selfless. She enters the ground in a way that is respectful. She is chosen by the magical flowers. 
On the last line, it is said that she enters the ground. She suffers the same destiny as her father, even though they are in no opposite sides of the sacredness spectrum. The earth is a mother, a divine feminine that gives birth to every human being. And regresses at uterum means that one can return to the womb of Mother Earth as a profane, dirty being and return as a new, sacred, divine person. By the end of the short story, Novidaji enters the ground of the flowers. We don't know if the flower was a mine that exploded or if it is a mystic flower and the return to the ground would be a symbolic entrance. But she enters the ground, and whether Novidaji died or not is a mystery. But she was definitely someone different after that. Maria, você foi muito bem na análise sobre a relação do sagrado e do profano no conto. Eu acho que esse conto, As Flores de Novidade, ele funciona muito, de maneira muito parecida com o dia em que explodiu uma bata-bata, sabe? Até a questão da explosão e tal, só que no caso do uma bata-bata é uma ave e no caso da novidade é uma flor, né? São várias flores que saem do, do chão. Mas, de qualquer maneira, essa relação do, do, do realismo fantástico de ter uma memória... É, deturpada, né? uma memória de sofrimento e, ao mesmo tempo, uma memória de narrativas mitológicas confluindo no mesmo ponto. Eu acho que essa talvez seja a estratégia do Mia Couto na maioria das, das histórias. Né? Essa realidade dura encontrando com uma, uma realidade mitológica, fabulosa, transcendental, metafísica, sagrada. Então, é, é sempre essas duas camadas né? de realidade se chocando, se misturando. É, Para terminar o nosso seminário, a, o Alisson preparou uma espécie de conclusão para as nossas discussões e eu acho que é a vez dele. Tá pronto, Alisson? Yes, sir. So let's do it, man. Hello, everyone. My name is Alisson. And today I will present a uh, small general analysis about the book Sia Loves Me, uh, A Surplus of a Vision. And in the book, Sia Loves Me by Mia Couto, the reader can notice along the story some common points in them. Each short story brings us a metaphor uh, and reflection about the world and ourselves. However, when we try to see what connects this compilation of tales, some patterns emerge and make us wonder what the author is trying to enlighten inside the readers. Among the narratives is recurrent the clash of realities and generations. We are often presented to two different points of views in the same, of, in the same history, uh, which normally will have an explanation more mystical and other closer to the ordinary life of the reader. Also, how the conflicts and affections between humans are more dramatic with the age differences. Consequently, the element of death appears as often as the theme of change, maturation, and adaptability, as the characters need to deal with such discrepancy. Although in some stories, it's difficult to tell apart the magical reality from the familiar reality, like in Woman of Me and The Waters of Time, In others, it shows very explicitly, like Blind Stellinho and The Day Mabata Bata Exploded. However, in either case, it has little rele rele relevance, sorry, it has little relevance whether we are dealing with a natural, supernatural, or even infranatural case. What does matter is how people will deal with the consequences. For example, in the tale of the two who return from the dead, It's not about if the men were really dead or how they returned from the dead, but how the village deals with the change and discomfort and how they the focus and attention of a group please, can be distracted or misguided. 
Another example is in the day Mabata Bat exploded, which regardless if it was a legendary bird or bandits, the protagonist has no power or influence over the landmines or explosions. And however the story is led by fate, it could run very differently if any characters assume a different personality, i.e. change their interests and motivations or expand their perspective of life. The philosopher Bakhtin would nominate the difference in experience of the world by each person as surplus or excess of seeing, which offering us an opportunity for mutually enhancing creative activity. It's interesting that Mia Cote brings to us his surplus through the stories, which shows the character surplus by reaching a new level of consciousness through their interdependence. Thank you. Muito bem. Isso não foi planejado, viu? Aconteceu do Alisson escrever um texto é, que desse esse acabamento para o nosso seminário. Pessoal, assim, discutindo sobre uh, o Ascolino, que é esse, essa figura de Goa e da história da independência e anexação de Goa, depois passando pelo Mabatabata, que é a história desse boi que pisa numa mina e do Azarias, que queria ir para a escola e não pôde ir para a escola porque pisou numa mina também. Depois, discutindo sobre os retornados transformados em fantasmas, ou seja lá o quê, pela burocracia de um sistema que ainda não está completamente funcional. E depois, discutindo sobre o Woman of Me, que é uma história de opostos que se fundem numa síntese, e passando para o estrelinho, que também é uma síntese de opostos. E, por último, a novidade, que é a história da relação entre o sagrado e do profano. Então, parece que as histórias lidam com essa, esse grau de dualidade, mas em síntese. Então, não é só uma dualidade separada, mas quase sempre uma dualidade em síntese. Então, é, são dualidades se chocando. Pessoal, eu gostaria de dizer que ler essas histórias com vocês foi uma experiência muito interessante, muito enriquecedora, pelo menos para mim, espero que para vocês também. É, eu gostaria de dizer também que o curso do semestre que vem já está sendo desenvolvido, a pesquisa do, do curso. No semestre que vem nós teremos a oportunidade de estudar autores que falam sobre a imaginação. Então não será um curso... É, de um autor, como foi o caso do Mia Couto, mas será um curso de vários autores, e cada aula nós vamos discutir, ou em cada grupo de aulas nós vamos discutir um ponto de vista sobre a imaginação. Eu, eu acho que está muito na hora da gente falar sobre imaginação, sabe? É, com todo esse desenvolvimento de inteligências artificiais, é, de mecanização da vida, é, eu acho que é falar sobre imaginação em momentos de crise, é fundamental para que a gente tenha algum grau de esperança e, principalmente, que a gente tenha estratégia, entendeu? Então, pessoal, é isso. Eu agradeço muito dessa escola que só existe por conta da curiosidade de vocês né? e da minha curiosidade de ficar buscando assuntos novos. É uma escola desenvolvida com base em pesquisa. Então, sempre, vai ser coisas, sempre vão ser coisas novas. Hoje é meu aniversário o Rubens tinha pedido para a gente cantar um parabéns, então hoje eu estou celebrando 40 anos, então é isso, vamos lá, a gente pode fazer isso juntos. Então, em inglês? Em inglês? Sim, yes, em inglês. Yes. Então, em inglês. Yes. <risos> assim. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Eu acho que a gente faria melhor se a gente tivesse é, junto no mesmo lugar, né? Mas foi. I agree. For sure. Pessoal, de novo, muito obrigado pela paciência, <risos> dedicação, comprometimento de todos vocês. Vocês estão agora finalmente e oficialmente de férias. Então, a gente só se vê semestre que vem. Tudo de bom, um grande abraço, aproveitem. Mas, bye, bye, semestre que vem, a gente continua pensando sobre a imaginação. Much.
Tchau para vocês. Tudo de bom. Thank you. 